we go. Hiya, everybody. This is the lovely. Oh, I'm not going to tell you who this is because it's one of our questions, isn't it? She has. <gasps> why would we say? Why would we? Okay, so we're doing another interview. Top of her game. Ooh, <laughs> we have some amazing people. We're um, having a little chat. We're going to call it interview. It sounds like an interrogation. Need a bright light on it. Is. It might have been interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> you know the questions we sent over? We're not doing those at all. No. Okay, we are. <laughs> Um, but what we're doing is inviting people who we believe are top of their game to share with us their secrets of how they do what they do, why they do what they do, and to give our watchers, listeners, readers, um, just some tips about how to be top of their game. Just from your experience, what you're brilliant at, because we know you are brilliant at what you do, because we know you and love you. And at this point, we're going to say, first question. The first question is really easy. Who are you and where do you come from? <laughs> in a still a black style yeah. <laughs> I'm Louise, I'm Louise Miller, I come from Leicester and I am, well, well you're probably going to ask me what I am in a minute but I'm a virtual assistant uh, mainly but yeah first of all thank you for thinking I'm top of my game and asking me on for a chat, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so along the lines of who are you, you said you're a virtual assistant and your name, who else are you? Who else am I? Oh, who else am I? That's a good one. I am a, I'm a wife to the lovely Tom. Ooh, and we've been, yeah, he's a lovely one. We've been married about 18 months, but we've been together for 10 years this year. Um, who else am I? I'm a homebody. I like, I like home. Um, I, this is my favourite place, which feels a bit sad, but hey, you know, Ooh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> there are other good places too, but I'm happy when I'm at home. Um, what else am I? Who else am I? I've got lots of lovely friends, lots of lovely clients. So, yeah, like hanging out with people. That's a really interesting question. Who else am I? So used to answering that question with what you do, aren't you? Which is one of my real bugbears. I hate that what do you do question. <laughs> but I don't have an answer for it. <laughs> 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 Who am I? Don't make an existential crisis. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> <laughs> Usually because I chat so much in the middle, I let Amy ask the question so then you can actually hear her speak. So, next one! <laughs> Here's one for you. Go if you were a mastermind, what would your speciality subject be? Oh, I'm glad you gave me advance warning of this one because you stumped me. And the conclusion <laughs> that I came to was that actually I don't feel like I know enough about anything to have a specialist subject that wouldn't need swatting up on. So what I did was think about what would I have fun swatting up on? So I would either go down the kind of 90s indie music route and just have some fun digging out loads of old stuff that I used to listen to back in the day, or like I'd go down the, sorry? Like who? Oh, I was a massive REM fan back in the, back in the 90s and just the whole Britpop and indie and alternative rock kind of stuff that was going on around then. Oh, okay. So I'd either delve back into that and relive my youth or I'd go even far back into my youth and I'd do children's literature because I love kids' books. Favourite ch children's book? What is it? Ah! Ah! <laughs> you like children's books too? Oh, my guilty pleasure. I absolutely love Enid Blyton. Which series? Oh, any of them. I've been rereading the old um, Mallory Towers stuff and, yeah, Famous Five, Secret Seven, all of that. I love it. And I know that's do you kind have of... I have some of them here, but I think the rest of them are in my mum and dad's loft. I was going to think, because right. Jenny, my daughter still keeps all her collection. Does she? I think people are still reading them, are they? It, yeah, she's read everything. She's like, devoured them, so I get that. I it I'm, feels really old, like old fashioned now. When you read them back, there are some bits that kind of make you go, oh. <laughs> you find yourself though, talking, go, well, that was swell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lashings and lashings of ginger beer. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> My niece started talking like that as well. It's like, oh, well, mother, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I just think it would be fun to go back and immerse myself in either or both of those things to spot up. Cool. Pretty good mastermind subject. I'm sure nobody else has done it. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> you told us a, a little bit. You told us that you were a VA. But just for everybody else, tell us exactly what you do as a VA. And what okay. is a VA, for those who don't know? What's a VA? Oh, okay. 
a bar. bar. A bar, yeah. A bar, a bar. <laughs> so I help busy business owners to grow their business by doing more of what they love and less of what they don't. So that basically sums up the impact that I think I have as a VA, which stands for virtual assistant. So basically I take on all the jobs that lots of small um, small business owners really don't enjoy because I found lots of small business people like yourself love all the creative stuff and the ideas and the getting in front of people and all of that but aren't such big fans of the detail although I know Amy you're a big detail lover too <laughs> but um yeah so people basically get me in to help with all of that stuff but as well as that I'm, I'm also just starting um part of the business where I help people to get stuff done with I keep saying this the wrong way around I keep saying with more stress and less ease that's not what I do <laughs> with less stress and more ease so I've got a whole kind of getting stuff done bit of the business which I'm growing at the moment which is through productivity sort of online challenge and one-to-one -one mentoring ah because we okay, the, the great secret is we're interviewing Louise because we use Louise in the best possible way um, and we know she is amazing at what she does and everything Amy and I do we know what we're good at and we just go oh there's bits of our business that really do stress us out and make us go oh I don't want to do this anymore I hate it and then we go Louise and Louise like, I love that bit I know we go eh? <laughs> we literally created a list of everything we need to do in our business or that will be part of what we do and we ticked off what we love and then we showed Louise the list and everything that we did and she went I love those things and we went Really? <laughs> so hurrah, match made in heaven. Yeah. Um, so why do you love it? Um, well, first of all, just in response to what you just said, first off, it took me a long time to get to the point where I feel comfortable with admitting that those are the things that I love. Because, <laughs> because I've always, I've got a creative side to me and I've always kind of felt that I should be this creative person doing I don't know what but actually that really isn't me I do that does come out in other parts of my life but not in my work and it's only in the last couple of years that I've gone do you know what I'm going to embrace <laughs> I'm going to embrace the happening because that's where my skills lie so it, it has been an interesting kind of journey getting to that point but the reason that I love it now is because I get to work with some really amazing people so another really important thing for me is that I want to feel like I'm making a difference um, so I'm quite choosy about who I work with. So I want to make, I know you're very, you're very honoured. <laughs> we snuck in when you were desperate for clients, didn't we? <laughs> But I, I feel like I want to be making some kind of an impact. And for example, when I left my job, I was really um, big on the impact of and the importance of looking after people's well-being in a more kind of corporate environment. And I think that is really important because it's so sadly lacking these days. But I toyed with that as an idea and I thought I don't have the skills to actually go out and deliver that that's not my bag it's not I wouldn't find that fun but what I can do is support other people who are doing that kind of thing and I have got clients who are doing that kind of thing um, and obviously I love what you guys are about um, I've got clients working with kids with anxiety which I think is another really important thing there's loads of wonderful things happening and I feel like I'm contributing in my own little way to helping you go and do your amazing things so that why I love what I do and also the look of relief on people's faces when they're <laughs> I think because a lot of people they find themselves they hold themselves back a bit in their business because like you say you look at this stuff and you think oh, I really don't want to do that so you'll put it off and as a result you won't make the progress that you want so I can really see the palpable sense of relief in people when I take stuff off their hands and then it helps them to move forward as well which gives me a real kind of buzz too Brilliant. Um, and just a little aside there that Louise is very, very creative. Um, even within, we've given her our work to do and I said, this is our brand. And she kind of just comes straight in and put a whole bunch of creativity on top of it. And because she does have that creative side to what she does. So big up for Louise. Woo -woo. She, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no. And I, and I love that again, because most of my clients want me to bring that to what I'm doing as well so it's yeah it's bringing that into this the other skills that I have with the admin side of things but yeah I'm never going to be a painter or you know any of that stuff that I used to think was what I should be doing yeah, but you are creating still yeah absolutely yeah um we 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 no 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 do you want to finish that thought so if you've got any thoughts as well you don't just ask questions which means like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was gone now Okay, go ask a question. 
I don't remember halfway through. Go. <laughs> so you mentioned about your kind of new bit that you're stepping into with the getting productive um, kind of side of things. Um, what would be three top tips you could give people to get more productive, to be more focused and to get stuff done? Okay, top three tips. I think something that a lot of people struggle with and that leads to overwhelm and procrastination is having a completely out of control to-do list and having about 15 different notebooks and post-it notes all over the fridge and all over the computer and stuck on their heads and stuck on their partner's heads and all over the place and there's not one single place. <laughs> Actually, I've got cameras in your house, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think a lot of people from what conversations I've had get quite stressed out by having all of these lists all over the place. So the first tip would be to try and get that under control by bringing all of the things that you need to do into one single place and one source so that you can see in front of you everything you've got on your plate, which makes it easier to know you're not going to forget anything because that's something I used to struggle with. I'd always have this idea that there's something in my head and I'm going to forget it. If you've got a system where everything is, you don't have to worry about that. So that's thing number one. Second tip, which is also related to to-do lists, is to differentiate and make sure you're really clear on the difference between a project and a task. Because I think a lot of people have projects on their to-do list, which they then look at and it feels so huge and overwhelming that they don't ever move forward with it. So as an example, for instance, some of my clients saying they want to write a book. If they've got write a book on their to-do list, that's not going to happen. It's always going to feel too big and too scary. You've never got time to sit down and just, just write a book. <laughs> Whereas if you broke that down into tasks, so write and you know, decide on the structure as a task, for example, or write 1,500 words, whatever. Break it down into tasks, and then that will feel more manageable and less overwhelming. So that's tip number two, differentiate between your projects and your tasks. And the third one is do one thing at a time. Oh, okay, we leave in the room here. <laughs> one thing. One thing. <laughs> Multitasking is a myth, people. <laughs> It, yeah, it's oh. when you flip between one thing and another, your brain can't keep up and you're losing time because your brain, you're not multitasking, you're switching and you're switching. It might be switching really quickly, but it's, you lose your train of thought with one thing, it takes you longer to come back to it. So I think keep it simple, do one thing at a time rather than trying to do five things at once. Let me put that on my to do list. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> good tips okay so quickly run number one was get your to-do list under control yeah number two was differentiate between projects and tasks and number three do one thing at a time got that nice did you make a list of that somewhere oh you put that in the, the thing didn't you louise well done put that in the thing remind us <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> I'll write it down somewhere we we'll forget yeah. <laughs> i'll put it on me you put, a post on your put it on a post-it on your head. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> okay, go. Ask another question. I said. Okay. <laughs> so, in your opinion, what's the biggest blocker to productivity? Distraction, Rue. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I understand. Well, Ruth, you are my inspiration behind uh, <laughs> thinking about this. Yeah, how would you make that so ideal fun. client? Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm glad I can help out there. I mean, that ties back into doing one thing at a time in a way, but it's also, I think, a lot of us are addicted to our phones these days and are constantly mm -hmm. grabbing at them for no apparent reason. It's become a bit of a habit. Um, and yeah, I think if we feel bored with what we're doing or we're a bit uncomfortable about it because we don't really understand what we're doing or there's some resistance somewhere, it's really easy to go and look at Facebook or to pick up your phone and see if anything's happened, even though you know nothing's happened because it would have beeped at you if it had happened, but still we look at them. <laughs> or is that just me? And I think it's that distraction and that constant running away from the boredom and the discomfort that can really slow people down. So what's your top tip for sitting into the boredom and the discomfort? Well, exactly what you just said, sit with it and notice how you're feeling. Oh, yeah, <laughs> try and figure out what it is that's making you feel that way mm. and just really try and resist the urge and see how long it lasts because 
I reckon most of the time, if you can just sit with it for 20, 30 seconds without reaching for the thing that you're itching to reach for, you'll be back in the zone and you'll be able to, you know, keep going. But it's just too easy to reach for the distraction. Oh, that's really good. That's like Louise does. Yeah, Louise does with uh, productivity what we do with bodies. Because we always tell our clients that we go, oh, exactly. the thing in your body, stop, listen to it, see where it's coming from, listen to it, and don't push it. Oh my gosh. So that, yeah, I get it now. I get the translation into that. Yeah. yeah, and I also make a lot of parallels between mindfulness. Well, not parallels, not the right word, but I think there's a link between mindfulness and productivity as well, because I think if you develop some kind of a mindfulness practice, you're going to notice those distractions be before they happen. You'll notice you're about to reach for it rather than reach for it. And then yeah. 10 minutes later go, oh, crap. I've yeah. just been looking at water skiing squirrels for the last 10 minutes on YouTube. Are they? <laughs> That's your mission for the morning. Find some water skiing. <laughs> oh no, I'm not helping, am I? That's no, not helpful. I did a really good video about some of the squirrel whisk whisperer. That was on oh. a website. I sent that to somebody who's fascinated with squirrels. Oh, she's like that. It was completely distracted. She says, read you for a cup of coffee. <laughs> But yeah, I think that there's definitely something in just developing a real awareness around what you're doing and being living in the moment rather than reaching, you know, just quickly going for the quick fix, which is what, you know, society is built for us to do that these days. People get paid a lot of money to make our apps addictive. So it's really no wonder that we are, yeah. I guess. That's true. People get paid a lot of money to make food addictive. It's the same, same. Mm. Never thought of it that way. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Very good. Blimey. We'll pay so, you double. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got witnesses to that now. <laughs> We're never publishing this ever. <laughs> <laughs> so Louise, when your work is done, how do you like to play? Well, first of all, I try very hard. I've been trying very hard since I was, well, no, I haven't been trying hard since I'm a child. I've only recently become aware of it. But the whole thing about you're only allowed to play when your work is done. I think we need to be getting rid of that. <laughs> so I noticed that in the question and thought, oh, it's not necessarily when your work is done, because that is my default is, you know, you're brought up, you can only go out and play when you've finished your homework and all of that way of thinking, I know. But I think a lot of us are brought up that way. So I'm trying desperately to play even when the work isn't done, because the work's never done. No. no. <laughs> you never get to a point where you go, finished. <laughs> no, never. No. Especially being self-employed, you always go, oh, I've done that project, next project. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Well, the next task, you just keep moving on, so there's always something to do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I don't want to be working and I want to go and do something else, I, don't, I think I said earlier, I'm a bit of a homebody, so a lot of the stuff I do for fun is at home and around homey type things. So this is what I was just saying before, you pressed record, but, and I know this completely contradicts everything I was just saying about multitasking, but this morning I have been mostly... <laughs> Making some bread, which is currently proving. So I like baking is a big thing for me, in cooking. And I've also, I'm making some seat covers, some um, cushions. So I've been sewing this morning as well. And those are the things that I like to do, kind of making stuff and being creative in that kind of a way. Um, I like to do, I'm just looking, I had to write down what I like to do because I, could, <laughs> I know, I had to think about it. Um, yeah, I like, I really love music. I love listening to music and I love walking around the house. And yeah, this time of year, I like just going out and lying on the grass on a blanket. And that's something I only rediscovered last year. Because I've always gone to sit on a chair, but actually, <laughs> lying on, on the grass and looking up at the clouds is very cool. So yeah, what, I, what I've kind of learned from you guys, though, when we were at the um, Elderflower Fields Festival earlier this year, is that I do also like running about like a twat. Sorry. Is <laughs> it rating on this one? No, we can tell you <laughs> We do all the time. Ranty swearing is fine. Good. Because, yeah, I had so much fun on playing rounders and just being outdoors and mucking about outside, and I don't do enough of that. So that's something that I'm really looking to do more of somehow. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to make that happen, but... You definitely kind of inspired me. Sorry, me. Frolicking is good for your soul. Frolicking, yes. <laughs> you call it frolicking like a twat is good for your soul. <laughs> yes, excellent. T shirt in that. <laughs> yes, write that down. Put that on the to do list, Louise. <laughs> oh. So you give us freedom 
in taking on our <laughs> tasks for us <laughs> and doing them so well. What's your idea of freedom? This, I love this question. I had a really good think about this. I think the obvious answer, which is, even though it's obvious, doesn't make it any less true or important, but is having, making my own choices around how I'm spending my time. And I think since I went self-employed, that has been huge for me. It's just having this space to do what I want to do when I want to do it, choosing who I work with and choosing the sort of stuff that I do. I think the less kind of obvious answer, but something that really I find really freeing is that in the last couple of years, I've really made a conscious effort to step away from the kind of um, societal expectations that you're going to have a job, you're going to have a career, you're going to keep earning more money, you're going to buy a bigger house, you're going to buy a newer car, and you're going to do all of that stuff. And a couple of years ago, I kind of went, well, why? And it just kind of struck me that in order to do all of that, you just need to keep working harder and harder and more and more. And why on earth would you want to do that? And actually, when we moved into the house we we're in now, we, I thought we'd probably only be here about five years and then we'd get a bigger one. But why do we need a bigger one? It's perfectly fine as it is. I'd rather work at the level I'm working at now, stay where I am, have more freedom to do what I want. And looking at things in that way has been really liberating. And yeah, well, I've got a big smile on my face. Hold on. <laughs> It's just, yeah, it really puts a different spin on things when you start thinking about when you buy stuff, you're not buying it with money, you're buying it with your time. Um, and I've done a lot of simplifying and decluttering and slowing down and stuff over the last couple of years. It's really shifted my perspective on all of that. And I think, yeah, that's been hugely freeing for me. Nice. Mm. That's very cool. Yeah. Your freedom choices. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that, mentioned that. So our three kind of words around our business to so everything we put out and everything we do is freedom, connection, and energy. You mentioned the freedom of choosing what you do, why you do it, and the connection of the, wanting to work with the people you work with. What about your energy? Where do you get your energy from? Well, as, as an introvert, I kind of, my energy supplies are replenished from having quiet time. So I need to have time on my own and time just chilling out. That's where I get my energy from. But I also feel energised when, yeah, I really, when I connect with the kind of playfulness and just generally being daftness, that, yeah, comes out from time to time. That energises me. Um, I, yeah, and I love being, I do love being outdoors. I, I try and get out for walks as much as I can. We're really lucky. We live quite close to the countryside where we are. So being outdoors and especially on a lovely day like this, that gives me this kind of glow of energy and loveliness, which is always good. Cool. But, and then, but also bouncing off people like you and all my other clients, I find I love that, all the energy that I get from being involved with making stuff happen for you guys. Cool. Well, this is the point where I'm going to do a massive appreciation for you, Louise. Mm. Your, just that sense of awareness of yourself and what you want, that obviously you have grown by working on it and realizing certain things and shifting your life. And appreciate that not only have you discovered that for yourself, but you're sharing that with the world in what you do and how you do it and why you do it. And it has affected our lives. And that's why we wanted to pull you onto this interview and go, you have to tell people about the thing you do. And not because of what you do, um, or even how you do it, but why you're doing it. Because that's what we want people to realize is you don't get to the top of your game by saying, look at this amazing thing I do, is look at why I'm doing it and how my heart's connected to it. And it helps other people do that connection for themselves. So we appreciate that about you, Louise Miller. No, oh, thank you, Ruth Smethurst. <laughs> Amy's got one more question for you. And Amy, but the other thing as well, I think it's really important to say about that is it wasn't pretty getting here. <laughs> There were some real horrible times. There was a whole year of just complete miserableness and medication and just horribleness that a lot of my learning happened during that time. And I've come out the other side with a real greater sense of awareness. So I think quite often, you can, well, we all are guilty of it. You compare people to where they are now and you, well, you compare yourself, should I say, to where other people are now and you don't see how they got there. And I think it's really important to acknowledge the fact that it's not always easy. And you sometimes do have to go through the ship to get out the other side. So it's always part different parts of a journey, whether they're yeah. different parts, and it's all yeah. a journey. So 
And a lot of the time, the only thing that people share are their highlight reels. And you look on social media and you see the highlights of somebody's life and you think that that's what it's like all the time and it really isn't. Thank you so much for that, because that's a massively important part, especially when a, a woman in business, especially by herself, is that thinking, oh, I'm not up there doing that social media thing. Then actually there are really crappy bits of slogging through stuff or going, how do I do this? And there's uncertainties. And yeah. obviously the uncertainties and the crappy bits we give to you. <laughs> <laughs> technical yeah. admin ones. We don't give them all way. to you. No, no. <laughs> Aren't you lucky we don't give them all to you? Delete, delete, hide, block. <laughs> Brilliant. So, other last questions. Oh, Good one. The last one. Anyway, sorry. Um, come dine with me. If you were to do come dine with me, what would you cook? And then as I was reading that, I was thinking that we could then go and Louise could cook. Oh, yes, know, what would you cook in my language coming cook? to visit, by the way? Are <laughs> you always welcome? I would do it. <laughs> but the difficult thing would be to stop Tom from cooking, actually, because he, he tends to do the cooking when we have people around. Mm -hmm. but, this is another thing that comes back to this self-awareness thing because I know I would get stressed as hell <laughs> about that. So I would not be attempting anything fancy. I'd be going with things I know that I can do. So it would be homemade soup and homemade bread to start with. And then I would just do something really easy. I'd make a massive lasagna and then I'd do a cheesecake because I can do all of those things and I know they'll be good. We'll be over in a week. We yeah, yeah. <laughs> crack on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, Louise's homemade fair. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, we'll have to ban Tom from cooking when we come over. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions we have for you, and you've answered them beautifully. Um, anything else we need to say? Share. Um, I no, I think so. we're done. But we just want to say a massive thank you for coming here, and hope that people that listen to this will have taken things from the three tips you shared and also your why, why you're doing what you do and just finding an encouragement for them maybe where they're at and realizing that actually it's all process. And so you've shared very eloquently. Thank you so much, Louise. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been fun.